Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we were discussing about how do I locate wing, where do I locate wing, should I give a setting angle in the wing or not, what should be the size of the tail, horizontal tail, whether we will give a tail setting angle or not. For meeting two conditions, one is the aircraft should be statically stable, that is DSCM by D alpha should be less than zero and CM not should be greater than zero so that I can trim at positive angle of attack. And how we started as far as conceptualizing the design, we said okay, I know CM versus CL will be something like this and this slope DCM by DCL is nothing but minus static margin and static margin we define as if this is the neutral point. And if this is the CG, then this difference is static margin and it is expressed as some percentage of chord. If I say 15% static margin, that means this gap is 0.15 C bar, mean aerodynamic chord. C bar is mean aerodynamic chord of the wing. So that is fine if if we are designing it like this that I want 15 percent static margin. Generally aircrafts will be designed between 5 to 10 or around that percentage. But at a conceptual stage you take a conservative value then we will find Murphy law will apply. We will have a lot of difficulty in handling CG. Once I know CM versus CL I can easily start visualizing it in terms of CM versus alpha where this slope now will be DCM by D alpha and this alpha I can easily get from lift equal to weight I know what is CLI requirement is there then on CLI write equal to CL naught plus CL alpha into alpha so I can get alpha please understand in the, during the conceptual stage you are assuming that all the lift is coming from the wing. But we know in actual practice, some lift will come from fuselage, some lift will come from tail. But at a conceptual stage, because the wing is dominating as far as lift is concerned, I do this approximation. I translate this to CM versus alpha. And now, I see that I need to have a particular value of CM naught here, which needs to be generated through either wing, how I am keeping the chambered wing, if I am keeping the AC of the wing ahead of, little ahead of CG of the aircraft, I know this gentleman becomes positive, right? But this will always remain negative for a chambered aerofoil but it becomes positive for a reflex aerofoil. So, camber has a positive camber and negative camber. When I am saying camber aerofoil, in a conventional sense, the CM, AC of the wing will always be negative. Since I want some positive value of CM naught, I have to nullify this contribution. So, one way I can nullify this by making this gentleman positive, that is I put AC of the wing ahead of CG of the aircraft. And second thing is, I come here, I try to see that even if I put this 0, then I can manipulate or generate a positive moment by giving IT negative and that is called tail setting of that horizontal tail negative. But if you want to enhance its contribution, then this gentleman VH tail volume ratio will play an important role and that is why for a designer he operates through tail volume. 
first question he decides how much tail volume I should take. Right? And you could see immediate effect of tail volume. The moment you increase tail volume ratio, your neutral point moves backward and it becomes more and more stable because VH is here. Right? So, so for a designer, he will always try to use this information for a different different similar aircraft. What is the tail volume ratio? He picks up that number, right? Before going to use historical data, let us also see once I write this expression C M not of the aircraft is C M A C of the wing. Do I know it when I am doing conceptual design or not? Answer is yes, because at some stage we have chosen an aerofoil, right? Okay. The moment I know the aerofoil, I know what is CMAC of the wing. Do I know CL0? Yes, I know CL0 because I have chosen an aerofoil, maybe a 6 series aerofoil, maybe a laminar aerofoil. Then the question comes, do I know XCG of the aircraft? That is the most difficult part. So again, we start taking the advantage of historical data and we know this uh, will be between 40 percent or maybe between 38 percent to 45 percent around that range from the leading edge or from the say from the propeller edge. Yeah. This distance you will find roughly 38 to 45 percent of the total length will be the CG. These are numbers, right? Okay. And a good designer will see from different different configuration where exactly CG is located. I just to give an example, as I was talking about CG, the CG of the aircraft will depend upon the type of payload you have or type of passenger configuration you have. If you see aircraft where the passengers are sitting here like your Airbus, Boeing, all those. So, there is a tendency of CG going backward, right? Okay. But if you see an aircraft like your Cessna 206, where most of the passengers are confined here, so this portion is much emptier. So, there you will not be surprised if this CG is between around 25 percent of the total length. So, it it is important to see what type of aircraft you are doing. So, what I should do is instead of 38 percent, right, I, let me write 25 percent to let us say 40 percent, which is little higher side. Let me correct this. But this is a guideline. My request is always you give a lot of weightage to a baseline airplane, right? Okay. Because every aircraft has got its different, different mission requirements and Accordingly, you will find CG will play havoc, right? Unless you are careful about CG, you will have to change many things at the final moment. Let us check for Cessna 206. We have Cessna 206, where I could see total length is around 28 feet, and your CG is roughly around 6 feet. So, how much it comes? 6 by 28, that is 3 by 14, so 3.02, oh, around 22 percent, right? Okay. So, this is the most forward CG, most aft CG is little aft. So, around that, that is why when I write 25 or 40, do not take me to court, okay, sir, it is 22 percent there, right? So, you are responsible to see what type of configuration you are doing because. Final aim is you want to carry a cargo, right? Carry passenger, carry cargo. So that is more important. You have to first see the layout, how you are going to put all those things, and then you start thinking of wing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Okay. So, so there is always a conflict between a layout engineer and a aerodynamics or a flight mechanics or design engineer. This is a part of life. Okay. So let's say in a simplistic manner. We only could tell at this stage that you have to be very, very careful about CG. It is better you see a lot of statistical data for different types of aircraft. Should put one should put a lot of care here. 
Now, I was discussing how many things we are having at our hand during conceptual stage since we have decided aerofoil roughly. So, you know this value, you know this value, you know XAC of the wing and also CL alpha tail that is you select some symmetric aerofoil. We will discuss that we generally it is recommended that you use a symmetric aerofoil tail, but its aspect ratio should be less than the wing aspect ratio just to ensure that tail stalls later than the wing right these things you know. I also have got a fairly idea about this number. So, what is important, who will save us is V h and what is V h? The tail volume ratio, why I am giving so much weightage to V h? Let us see that. V h is tail volume ratio, I am talking about horizontal tail. Ideally, if this is the F wing, this is the tail, this is the AC of the tail. Right? And let us say this is the CG of the airplane. So, LT the tail moment arm is defined by the distance between CG of the aircraft and the AC of the tail. Right? But the whole problem is at this stage we are not pretty sure about the CG, CG variation would be there and uh, sometimes it is difficult to really get what is the LT we are talking about, but at the conceptual stage what we do when we define V h which is actually S t L t by S w c bar which is called at a conceptual stage we take L t as distance between A c of the wing and A c of the tail right? at a conceptual stage, okay? but you should not forget that ideally moment will come about C g because of tail. So, this distance L t distance to C g and the A c of tail is important, but we use this length. At the same time you also know the difference between C g of the aircraft and A c of the wing will not be much. right? So, it is not a bad assumption, it simplifies your approach because you are going to use statistical data. When I am saying so many things, let me erase this. I need to know roughly what is the fuse large length. Because after all, we are going to install the tail wing that will be on the fuse large. So I need to know where do I locate it depending upon the fuse large length. How do I get what should be the fuse large length and the diameter? Again, you understand that is decided by the purpose. If it is a full fledged passenger large aircraft, the length will be predominantly decided by how many passengers you are going to carry, and then you have to ensure that they can walk through the aisle. So that will decide the diameter. But if it is a general aviation type, Cessna 206, you know, hardly four or six people will be sitting, and they need not walk through the aisle they can go crawl in and sit. So, all these things will decide the type of aircraft fuselage you are going to design. There is an excellent uh, statistical data, statistical guideline which is purely estimated using the gross weight of the airplane and that is fuse large length given as L equal to A W naught to the power C. Just I will give you example for sail plane some number you can refer Raymer this is unpowered. A and C if I write and there is a cell plane powered, then general aviation single engine 
then general aviation, twin engine, and you can have a turboprop. And typically, the values are for a cell plane unpowered, it is A is 0.86 and C is 0.48. For power, it is 0 0.71, 0 0.48. For general aviation single engine, it is 4.37 and 0 0.23. And then your twin engine, it is 0 0.86, 0 0.42. And for turboprop, it is 0.37. 0.51. These are statistical number, and this gives excellent correlation. And please understand when you are using this, this is in FPS, right? That is very important. You use FPS system, and maybe new books and everything they are giving in SI unit, but I am giving you in FPS. Let us check how does it look like. I was checking with Cessna 206 and Sinus 912. Cessna 206 is like a general aviation single engine aircraft and the weight is 3000 pound. So, 3000 to the power C, C is how much? C is 0 0.23, 0 0.23 into 4.37. And you'll find this is coming around 28 feet, 28.7 feet. Actual measurement I have seen, we have done it roughly, this is 28.28 point, 28 feet 4 inches. This is for Cessna 206. Then I was checking correlation for Sinus 912, which is a motor glider. So it is cell plane powered and its weight is around. Uh, let me check, around 1200 pounds, so it was, uh, what is that, 1200, so if it is, if it is cell plane powered 0 0.71 for this 0 0.71 into 1200 pounds to the power 0 0.48, right, and that was coming around 21 feet and actual measurement is 21 feet, 21.3 feet. So, you see this correlation works very well and in the Ramers book, the author also claims this gives excellent correlation. The message is you can easily use this relationship, this correlation in, in, in FPS unit and quickly get what is the fuse large length. Once you have a fuse large length, now, where do I locate horizontal tail, wing, that becomes easier, right? You will also appreciate when some body is moving in air, especially fuselage, you think of cylinder moving in air, it is important to decide what should be length to diameter ratio for that drag is as low as possible, right? For that, some guideline is there for a fixed internal volume L by D 3 to 5 is good enough for subsonic and L by D greater than 12 for supersonic 12 or 14 these are numbers right. So, this may help you in getting what should be the slenderness of the fuselage, but do not forget one thing. If you are designing a Cessna 206, the requirement is different. There is no requirement of passenger moving through the aisle, so it do not require height. If you Cessna 206, you have to just go inside and sit, so the diameter automatically goes down, right. So all those things play an important role when you will be actually designing a fuselage, we will try to incorporate those things. But this is at a conceptual stage, so 
it's important that you know how to get a rough idea how much length will be there, right? We have just come out of the classroom because I thought we have spent enough time drawing diagrams, equations on blackboard. Let us check ourselves with whatever we have learned. How our mind get excited when I see an airplane? For example, if I see the airplane from this angle, what is the span of this wing should be the first question that will come to my mind. And this is, I am standing near Cessna 206 aircraft. And the span is around, whatever record I have got, around 36 feet. You can easily convert it into meter, 36 divided by 3.28. It will be around 11 meters, 11 to 12 meters around that. So that gives me an idea about what is the span because I need to know that information. But my next question would be, if this is the span, what is the area of this wing? Because we have been talking about wing loading. So I need to know what is the wing loading of this aircraft because that we have been talking for last few lectures. Once I know the span, I look for what is the area. And for this airplane, the area is around 174 square feet, which is equivalent to around 16 meters square. And since I now need to know what is the wing loading, so I am taking the gross weight of this airplane, Cessna 206, and the gross weight is around 1636 kg. So then gross weight is 1636 kg and wing area is 16.17 meters square. So for me, it's very easy to get wing loading. Wing loading will be around 100, 105, 110 kg per meter square. And you can check from the statistical data for general aviation, single engine aircraft, the wing loading will be around 100 kg per meter square. So once I see this, immediately I cannot avoid looking at the propeller. One thing I see first that this propeller, there's a three propellers like that. There are an airplane with two propellers. It has its own stories in terms of efficiencies and power being delivered. And if you see, as a conceptual designer, I would like to know how much is this each propeller length. The propeller length is around three feet. And also, you know that this is a variable pitch propeller, which you know also that if I want to maximize the power at different flight conditions, so I have to fly at a different, different pitch angle. I need to ensure that the propeller is highly efficient at that point. Now again, recalling what we have been talking in the classroom, we are talking about thrust loading, then power loading. Since this is an IC engine backup, propeller driven aircraft, we will not talk about thrust loading. So we like to know what is the power loading for this aircraft. And the power loading for this aircraft is 12 pounds per horsepower. Again, you can check the statistical data that this will fit into whatever has been uh, reported in the literature. So I repeat, the power loading is 12 pounds per horsepower. Now from here, I need to see also the landing gears. If you see, these are the rear landing gear. So I would like to know what is the wheelbase as a conceptual person. I am now doing conceptual design and the wheelbase is, as per my record, is around 5.77 feet. You can understand if the wheelbase is less than a threshold, the aircraft can topple like this. Right? If it is more, it is also not going to help you. So there is an optimal value as a designer you find out. Again, you use some statistical data which has evolved for a different weight class, different types of wing. Once you know what are these basic dimensions, you can easily uh, start conceptualizing a sketch. Then you add the law of physics and make the airplane the way you want it to fly. See, once I'm trying to draw a sketch in my mind about airplane, 
it is not only important that you know how much will be wing area or how much will be the fuselage area, fuselage volume, but you also should know how they are located relative to each other. Like if I ask you to draw a figure of a human sketch, you always try to find out what is the proportion of this size to the total size and accordingly you make a proportional diagram so that it should look like a human figure. Similarly, whatever theory you have, conventionally it should look like a conventional airplane, right? So first thing also should come to our mind that okay, this is my propeller, so how much from cockpit to this distance I should keep in relation to the total length of this airplane generally for a general aviation aircraft. Just to take an example for this, the total length of this airplane from here to the extreme, that is the tip of the rudder, it is around 28 feet 3 inches. How much? 28 feet 3 inches. And from here to this cockpit here, it is roughly 3 feet 9 inches. So if you see the ratio, 20 feet is 20 feet. 28 feet, edit, the total length is 28 feet 3 inches and from here to the cockpit it is around 3 feet 9 inches. So ratio is around 20 to 25 percent, 22 percent to be more precise. So when I am drawing a sketch, I know that I should keep this much of percentage for the cockpit start point and then depending upon passenger, I will lay out the dimension. This is important for the high wing. For a conventional airplane, the high wing will start somewhere from here. So this is a very important information for drawing a conceptual sketch. Also if I try to know from, if I try to find the reference from here to where do I put my horizontal stabilizer, the total length was 28 feet 3 inches and from tip to this point it is around 21 feet 6 inches. So it is around 75, 70 percent, right? Okay. This is uh, very important information uh, when you are trying to conceptualize, and you will realize that these dimensions have important uh, effect on the overall stability of the airplane. How we are going to design the stability of the airplane, and stability will be directly connected to handling qualities. It is also important to see what will be the CG location. We will show you where the CG location when you cover the stability part of it. Again coming back to the wing, there is another important thing you should realize that whether the wing is parallel to the fuselage reference line or wing has a setting angle. That is the wing, if this is the wing, how this wing is mounted parallel to the fuselage line or it has been given a setting angle which we call wing setting angle. Right. So once I am trying to see this wing, you will realize why I am also looking for wing setting angle. And during our stability analysis, we will see that wing setting angle will play an important role in generating lift and control characteristics. So generally, if you are doing a conceptual sketch, it is better to keep one or two degree wing setting angle. And then final design you may give wing setting angle, may not give wing setting angle depending upon your requirements, right. Now let us come back, we know the wing loading, you know stall speed is square root of 2 into W by S divided by rho into C L max and wing loading is around 100 kg per meter square. So I write 2 into 100 into 9.8 divided by rho let us say 1.2 into C L max I take around 1.2. So that will give you around 25, 27 meter per second. So the stall speed will be around 22, 23 a takeoff will be around 27, 28 depending upon what is the flap orientation. So you could see that all these numbers are making sense based on whatever we have studied there. Okay. See this is a very important part of the airplane, this is called stabilizer, you all know. So as a designer, if you want to conceptualize this configuration, I should look for if this is the hole is horizontal stabilizer and 
this much portion is the elevator, then I should try to know what is the percentage of area being used as elevator. And from this you could see that this is around 30 to 35 percent of the whole stabilizer area. So when I am conceptualizing a design, I will keep around 30 percent, although by through analysis we will also find out that and whatever number I get through analysis, I cross check whether I am really get making sense or not, whether these numbers are coming or confirming to the conventional tail or not. Right? You will also find there is some portion of the tail uh, elevator is somewhere here and why this is given, many airplanes may not have this. So, we will talk about this portion also, how it is going to help in the handling qualities of the airplane. Since we are talking about elevator, it is important to know that where is the CG location of this whole airplane. That is also very important observation one need to have. This location of CG somewhere should be closer to this landing gear and you understand the CG should be a little ahead of this rear landing gear. If the CG is behind rear landing gear, there will be tendency of airplane to hit like this. And if you see the dimension here, this uh, CG is roughly around 8.5 feet for most forward and the landing gear is around 9 feet. Right, okay. These are rough numbers. So, what is, what is being conveyed is you ensure that the CG is first of all near here where the people are sitting, cockpit etc. is there and that CG location should be little aft of the rear landing gear. Okay. So, that also makes sense for us and if you see now here another question always comes to our mind when you see an aircraft we try to know what is the ratio of length between span and the length. Right? If this is the span, what is the length? What is their ratio? Typically for this example airplane, total length is around 28 feet 3 inches and if you see the span is around 36 feet. Okay? So, 36 divided by 28 feet. So, around 70, 75 percent that is the ratio of of the length to span. That is, you can keep the length around 75 percent of the span to start initial conceptual design. Right? And you will find mostly that will confirm to conventional airplane that is the total length is around 75 percent of the total span. This is an important uh, observation you must keep back of your mind and also Another question will come to your mind, what is the diameter, maximum diameter of the fuselage? You very well understand that depends upon what sort of a passenger, number of passengers you are going to carry. But for this of a six seaters, for this airplane, the width is around 50 inches, 50 inches means around 4 feet and the height is around 43 inches which is around 3 point some feet. So, 50 inch and 30 inch that is the uh, cross section width and height of the fuselage. So, for such airplane you do not walk through the fuselage you go crumble like this and then sit. But for an Airbus or Boeing or big airplane you need to walk through the fuselage so their diameters are more. And so, that sort of a requirements are different. But as long as you produce appropriate lift, it does not make much of a difference from aerodynamics point of view. Remember we started talking about this length because we are looking for how to locate horizontal tail, what should be size and we decided the best way to visualize that conceptual stage is to look for VH tail volume ratio. right? So, statistical sum value I will be giving for tail volume ratio and you know what is the importance of tail volume ratio. So, again for sail plane then general aviation 
then twin turbo prop then jet transport we will just give some representative number where C H T is the tail volume ratio for horizontal tail and C V T tail volume ratio for vertical tail and we define C H T as L H T S H T by C wing S wing and C V T vertical tail volume ratio as L V T V T by B the span of the wing S W. Please note this vertical tail volume ratio is non dimensionalized with span in contrast to horizontal tail volume ratio we try to non dimensionalize using cord mean aerodynamic cord more precisely right. so these values are these are on 0.5 for cell plane 0.7 for general aviation twin turbo prop 0.9 and 1.0 and this is 0 0.02 0 0.04 0 0.08 0.09. These are conservative numbers, especially here. These are conservative side. Okay. But at the conceptual stage, okay, we we'll use that. There will be a question: How much LHT I should take historically? There are some guidelines. You understand this LHT means that LT, which is ideally it is distance between AC of the tail and CG of the aircraft. But we are, since we don't know where is the CG. We take from AC of the wing to AC of the tail. Also, silently we know that AC of the wing and CG they will be close, right? For a guideline for LST, for a front mounted engine, L you can take as 60 percent of fuse large. So that is why before coming to this, we said let us see what will be the fuse large length. If the engine is at the wing, wing mounted engine, then L you take around 50 to 55 percent of fuse large length. And for a sail plane, for a sail plane, we take L as 65 percent of the fuse large length. So, this is typically the number. Why this is important? You see. Suppose I am designing a sail or let us say general aviation, right. So, I know CHT is 0.7. So, immediately I write 0.7 is equal to LHT. LHT I get from this. So, this is known. I want to find out what is SHT. This is what I want to know. Divided by C bar, already I know wing I have designed, or at least conceptualized wing area I know. So, you can easily find out how much tail area is required at a simple conceptual state. Then what a designer does whatever number it comes he checks what is this percentage of this tail area in compared to the whole wing area. So, there are statistical data also will be there is it 15 percent, 20 percent or is it only 4 percent, 2 percent. So, that also gives the designer a feel whether he is in the right direction or not. Right. We will be talking about that as well, but this is just tell you, telling you how do I get first number, then there is a process of checking whether at an intermediate stage am I going right or not. There this statistical data gives you lots of help and that is again and again I am telling you need to have a baseline aircraft always beside you to check whether you are in right direction or not. Right. With this background now we will become more specific on 
how much will be the elevator area, how much will be the aileron area, how to decide at a conceptual level, how much should I take a rudder area. So that with a pen and pencil and a small small this information, I should be able to sketch my first conceptual aircraft where sizes are proportionate. Right? Then we go for final analysis and do refinement. So maybe another one or two lecture I will take on how to get into all these numbers and you can at least draw a good sketch of an airplane which looks proportionate. Okay? Thank you very much.